quickly go over this. That um, failing means that it, your code is running, prop, is running, and doesn't crash or doesn't error out. However, it's uh, it's not doing the correct thing. Error means that it's mm -hmm. actually crashing, or the program doesn't have defined behavior for certain certain things. So whenever you write a test, you should know whether it's going to error or fail. And if it does the wrong thing, you have to go through your code and figure what's going on. Um, so that's the main reason why I'm trying to pull out test review development. I think it's a very helpful technique. Definitely help you get through, sign a 9 and 10 very quickly. Once I have a test review problem, I think you sign a 10 in about an hour, hour and a half. Um, what's the bet? So, just a little plug on myself here. Uh, if you go to github.com slash split, you can see the things I'm working on. At the top of the results right now, there should be a repository called Give Me Your Knowledge. So, if we do have a top like this, which I hope we will, then I'll be posting all the code samples for and things like that on there. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is I'm hoping to give you a knowledge talk. So the idea of these talks is to get you guys to try to share your knowledge in the class and give us your knowledge. Um, so if you're interested in giving a talk to the class, please contact me or David and we'll try to arrange it. These will probably in, cl in class talk hours because it tends to be a very convenient time when you all have to be on campus anyway. Um, yeah. And any questions about question development or audio test assistance? So you talked about red, green, and uh, <coughs> typically how long does it how long does it take to pass transition between red and green? Is that really very um, Do you spend most of your time doing red tests or should they be secondary? Um so they, it, it, it really depends. I mean for this CS assignment, chances are you're gonna be spending much more time developing than you are doing uh, running tests. Typically for things that are fairly trivial to implement, you spend more time writing the tests and fun functionality, which again seems kind of productive, but for larger scale projects, when you're working with lots of developers, it's worth it because you know that once you implement it, no one else is going to break it. Um, so it really depends on where it is. I mean, the better, like, the more high quality code you write during the green step, the less time you spend refactoring it, but it really does do what you want. Back to that same question again. What's the assignment? Should you even be considering focusing on red tape? Red? Or should you just go with green all the way? You should, well, I mean, you, you, want, you want to make sure that you have very, very simple failing tests. Honestly, writing a test should not take you long at all. They're very, very simple inputs. Um, like I said, the example there, I had all I need to see whether, was whether it was going to work on return A. It's a very simple test you have to write. All you have to type, the entire test case was contained, that's enough to test functionality. Um, so you should be spending all the time, I expect you to spend substantially more time developing than you will writing tests. Okay? There's a bunch of things going on here. One of the things is that people really hate writing tests. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you do it first, it's kind of like eat your vegetables before you eat your dessert. Well, sorry, the other thing I forgot to mention is one other thing about the red, the red green back mantra is that the reason why it's red green and not just like fail path is that the red green, having the visual feedback saying like, yeah, it works. Is nice. It's nice to give yourself feedback to like, yes, what if you did actually did something useful? As opposed to like running a dip on it's like, oh, nothing showed up on the console, that's good, I guess. Um, maybe what were, I didn't really quite follow how you chat with that feed. Like, because in assignment now we're checking that the ASM plot, the ASM code is correct. I'm still confused right. about how you check that. So the thing is, we're not actually checking to see whether the ASM file is, is correct. There's no way of us predicting. Uh, or rather, we shouldn't be predicting whether the output, whether the assembly output of our code is correct. And the reason why is because, like I said, if you develop a full test gate, a full test set where you have your set of, uh, of WL files and corresponding outputs as files you're expecting, as soon as you implement a single optimization, all your tests will fail. That's not what you want. So we let, I suggest you test this. You specify a uh, the WL file, and you also specify a set of inputs and outputs for the resulting executable. So in my test I never check the output of the assembly files. How do you run the executable itself? Uh, by using uh, MIPS set to it. So you actually will run it through the MIPS emulator. Oh, so, this, so all of this, all of these things actually have to be done on the CS241. No. So uh, the thing is, I I process this a long time on PyScript. You can get the entire environment running locally, with some exceptions which you can hack past. Um, so you can get the entire thing running locally, and then by running your test system, you can run everything locally, and it's much nicer. So you've got basically a test suite of test suites for your... Yes. <laughs> or rather, a single test, that's why uh, a single test case consists of a number of trials against 
a specific executable. Zmir. How many tests do you have in your test suite? This many. This many. This many. That's my entire test suite for Simon 9 and 10 combined. So see separation, uh, first oh no, sorry, not this sorry, it's more. Huh. Um Okay, so this is the number of test suite. Well, it's not going to just tell you anything, because there's a lot of extra ones. But yeah. <coughs> the idea is that each of these tests, with some exceptions, tests the bare... So, like, you should be having tests that test the bare minimum functionality. So, like I said, in the example of the assembly file, I have a test that explicitly tested just whether the list command is working. But then you also want to make sure that you have tests that test things in combination. Because just because they work individually doesn't mean they work together. And I can almost guarantee you'll find cases of that happening when you're running uh, 7, 9, and 10. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend you write test. Write when you're doing test driven knowledge, the test you should be writing is the simplest possible one. Once you have that passing, then you can write some more complex tests and see whether everything's working uh, in orchestra. Is there a language that's like best suited to do all this kind of stuff? So um, there are a number of frameworks that that do uh, various kinds of testing. The, the reason why I decided to write my own for this one is because we're not doing unit testing. So unit testing is typically you have a test suite that's written in the same language as your product, and you're actually testing the internals by, by doing manual function calls. So some examples are, are posted on, on the GitHub page, but for instance, for JavaScript, there's a library called QUnit, which does unit testing. It's what jQuery uses to test all that stuff. Uh, for Ruby, there's there's test unit, and there's also RSpec. Um, uh, JUnit. You know JUnit. Sorry? JUnit. Uh, JUnit. So there's, there's JUnit for unit testing in JavaScript, which you can use. Um, the thing is, really what we're doing here is I'm doing something called black box testing. So black box testing is, I don't care what happens on the inside, all I want to know is what goes in and what goes out. Um, so really, I, I personally like Ruby for this, because it's a very nice scripting language. Uh, doing this kind of thing in, in series must allow to be much, much harder. Um, specifically, the other thing I get out of Ruby is I can get a full directory listing in one line. I can just get, say, give me five lists of test cases slash star slash this, and it'll give me all test cases. Um, what about Perl? And yeah, Perl would work fine for this too. I have never actually used Perl, but it tends to be used for this kind of thing as well. Uh, the other reason I chose Ruby is because it has a nice library that allows you to do color console output. But, dude, they're, they're ready to remake everything better. Um, yeah, so there are lots of different frameworks. It really depends what you're doing. So, like I said, there, there's unit testing versus black box testing. Um, almost every language will have a thing where it's, it, it's that letter or the acronym for language and then unit after it. So there's this JS unit, there's a G unit, like I said, there, there's R, there's a test unit, which is Ruby. There's lots of different kinds. So if, if you're looking for a specific language, just look up for unit testing for language and you'll find something. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any recommendations for how to do this kind of development on the PC? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Because, <laughs> yeah, the problem with that is it's not impossible, but very difficult. <laughs> In that case, uh, I am of the opinion it's not worth it's not worth the time investment because the the point the point of doing this lot isn't really to get really good coding templates, it's a large time concepts and I mean those are the least vigorously tested labs I've ever seen. It's a little you have like four test cases in, in the lab. So honestly it's not worth it. See you have to actually write a test suite that runs on the TCA K box. Or sorry, yeah, on the TCA box, it's not worth it. <laughs> Just set, okay. like, set some test inputs in your head, make sure the outputs match by after you run. Right. Any questions? Alright, like I said, if anyone's interested in giving a talk, um, it gives you publicity, teaches your classmates things, hopefully gets you better life when something hits me. Does it have to be coding? Uh, <laughs> so it doesn't have to be coding, but it should be relevant to our class. <laughs> So I mean, if you have, if you have something like interesting mathematical findings or interesting things in development and science, then yeah, sure, go for it. Uh, if you are wondering whether you, whether your idea is viable, just come ask me, David, and we'll try and help you figure out whether it's uh, your presentation to you. Okay. Sweet.